How's it going today? Good to see you on video today. Hey, Lindsay, I'm good. How are you? I am good. I'm feeling great. I'm happy to be here. We just moved into our new home. Oh my gosh, it is so chaotic moving. You know what that's like, right, Michelle? It's not fun. It's not fun. <laughs> <laughs> it's a oh lot. Oh my gosh. So did you spend like the whole weekend doing it or did you have Oh, one totally. Totally. Oh, no, we spent like all of last week, like getting painters, getting cleaners, boxing up the movers and dealing with all the, you know, you think you're done. And then there's like 10 more things still at the original place that you have to go back oh. for. It's incredible. <laughs> oh, well, I wish you so. lots of luck for your new place. Thank you, Michelle. Thank you. I'm excited. And so what are we getting into today? Are we talking about animals? Today we are talking about birds. <laughs> oh, birds, just birds. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> just birds. I've chosen okay. birds for today. I was hoping like uh, puppies or something, but it's birds. All right. Well, some people I like birds. birds. <laughs> I chose birds. Um, Lindsay, do you like birds? Do you have like a favorite bird? Or oh, anything? you know what? I've never had very strong feelings. I was thinking once a few weeks ago, I was thinking what, how weird it would be to have like a, what is it? A parakeet? The ones that talk to you, that ta that like mimic you or they parrot you. Wait. I think that's more just like an actual parrot. I don't a know. I only yeah. say that because I, I had parakeets growing up and they didn't do that. Oh, they didn't just, talk. Unless okay. they weren't very parrots. smart. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. it's You had parakeets growing up. What was that like? Were they I noisy? I did. Uh, yeah, they were noisy and there was poop everywhere in the cage. And oh, um, no. like once one flew away when my mom's coworker was watching them while we were away. And, and um, <laughs> but I had like a blue one that uh, looked like it was like blue and then it looked like a zebra the rest of it and then the other one was uh yellow and uh green and their names were tootsie and sunshine but then when sunshine you know bad thing happened to sunshine we had another one and we named it sunday <laughs> that's a kind of a cool name actually sunday i like that yeah it's kind of cool yeah, yeah well, we had birds too we had little I don't know what they were, just tiny little birds, but my, my cat killed one of them, unfortunately. Oh, when no. we were... <laughs> That's kind of traumatic. It was traumatic, especially for my brother, because he let the birds out of the cage accidentally. And, you know, he, yeah, he was a little kid. It's traumatizing. Anyway, so birds, anyway. I don't know. Yeah, birds, I don't have a lot of great experiences with birds, but in the English language, there's a lot of birds. <laughs> there are a lot of birds, right? Guys, yeah, sometimes we like to do these like th kind of themed episodes. I will do it again. Animal idioms. We've done other ones, right? So we did episode 1276, which was an episode about animals that's not about animals. And 1238 <laughs> was quit horsing around and listen today. And then there was a video from Jessica, uh, animal idioms for describing personality. So we've kind of discussed animals before, but I've chosen, you know, to focus on the birds today um, because it's fun to have a focus and so we're gonna teach you some really useful ones today uh Lindsay but before we do that we have something really cool and exciting to tell our listeners yeah I want to make sure you guys know the first live event of the season is happening on January 25th and 29th and we're gonna do something brand new this year guys we're calling it open conversation club where you're gonna come together you're actually going to get to practice live with other students from all ears English you're gonna get to talk to us you're gonna practice one very specific grammar point for business English all right guys so it's going to be awesome you got to sign up because this is totally different and totally new so go to all ears forward slash open to sign up for that event choose January 25th or 29th and we'll see you guys there I'm really excited for this, Michelle. It is something new that we've never done. That is very exciting. Oh my gosh. I think that you guys are going to love it. So make sure that you get in on that. Very exciting. Yeah. Um, so, all right, let's, let's get into it, Lindsay. What's the <laughs> okay. first one? Okay. So guys, write these down. The first expression that we use in English is a, lo a little birdie told me. So this is kind of funny, right? It sounds cute. Um, when cute. would you say this? Like, what would it mean? Like, basically, for, first of all, it's funny because I planned this episode and then I heard somebody use it. And uh, that's always Ooh. when I know that it's good stuff, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Because it might, you might hear this one and think, really, people? Like, it's kind of cutesy sounding, but I mean, it really is used. So I you're mean, saying I like big, strong least. men use it even? Like, is that what you mean? Like, it doesn't have to be just like little kids or... <laughs> 
Something. <laughs> it doesn't have to. It doesn't have to be little kids. Um, would a big strong man use it? Uh, I don't see why not. I don't. Well, I mean, it's not like a. I don't know. It is. It's, I mean, men can men can use. <laughs> sure, they can. <laughs> it's not off limits. Um, but yeah, I mean, this is used when you're not specific about sharing who told you some news, right? So like, mm. maybe maybe the person knows who told you, like. Um, but it's just saying I heard. It's a different way to say I heard through okay. someone, right? Love it. Love it. So let's do a quick little role play for our listeners then. Okay. All right. right. Hey, Michelle, a little birdie told me that you got a new car. I did. It's bright purple and beautiful. Oh my gosh. Bright purple. Wow. That must have been custom ordered, Michelle. Oh yeah. When I, when I turned 16, my greatest dream was to get a bright purple or yeah, a car. And my parents still, you know, they kind of tease me about it today. If they see like a really, really like bright car, they're like, Oh, Michelle, that would be your car. Um, But no, I never got a bright purple one. I did have a bright blue one. You did. Okay. But that sounds a little bit more normal. Bright purple seems like something you would have to custom paint for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. So that one's useful. And the other one is the early bird gets the worm. So this is more kind of, it's almost kind of a proverb because it has a little lesson in it, right? Yes. I like this one. It's so true. What does it mean, really, when we say that? It's this idea of if you are prepared, if you are early with something, then you will be the one to, you know, reap the benefits. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And also, well, yeah, I think of it that way. And I also think of it in the sense of if you get up early, in the day, right, right. you know, you are going to have the most success. That might be a myth. We don't know, right? I mean, a lot of people don't do so well at five in the morning, yes. right? Michelle, we've had this conversation before. Yeah. I have always liked to get up early and get everything going. You like to stay up later. Neither is better than the other. So I'm not sure if I believe that you know, in that side of things. Yeah. But not, and neither one is better than the other, but yours is better for like being a human in the world. Like, in <laughs> yes, society, yes, you know, probably. Like, so one is, so in that sense, like it, it, one is better than the other, I think. But um, yeah, yeah so I see it what can you be mean. actually early in the day, but it can also, it, so it could be literally like, oh, if you wake up early, you know, things will yeah. be done. But it could also be just like, oh, if, um, if you apply to maybe this is, oh yeah, like, this is the example. Let's do the example. Okay, Here let's do it. Okay. Uh, Lindsay, make sure you apply for the job ASAP. The early bird gets the worm. Oh, you're right. I'll do it tomorrow. Yeah, okay. that's true. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Right. Okay. So like just being, you know, it could apply to just like your general philosophy on things, getting things done quickly, like showing you're interested, things like that. When you applied for college, did you do the early decision thing or early? early um, I don't think, no, I didn't no. do early de- decision. So er- early decision, guys, is I believe it's basically telling the school that you will accept if you are yeah. admitted. Because the school right, wants to apply. know, right? They want to yeah. know, okay, who do we have for sure before they send out the other yeah. regular? Usually it's um, by Christmas or by December. Sometime you would you would declare your school and let them know you're coming. And that's early deci- decision, guys. So right. good term. So I was you, having you, a conversation. Yeah, sorry, go ahead, go Michelle. Ahead. No, go ahead. well, I was having a conversation with this. We were at a holiday party over the weekend and someone was a mom of a kid applying for school. And uh, she was talking about that, that her kid was applying for early decision and very excited and everything. That's all. Oh, uh, yeah. No, that's good. I, I think it's like if you're 100 percent sure this will be the school, it's kind of like an extra signal like. Right. Hey, I'm going to accept. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. 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 All right, cool. What else, Michelle? What's next? All right. The next one is the early bird special. So, <laughs> let's see. Well, I was actually searching and, you know, to, to check if we've done this one before. And we've used early bird, but like, in, you know, not really in an episode, but to talk about like an early bird discount or something like that. So, yeah, um, early bird is a, an early bird special, I think. of. I mean, well. Let, we'll get into that in a second. But Lindsay, what time do you eat dinner? Oh my gosh. I am not on the early bird train. So when it comes to dinner, I eat dinner usually later. Like last night I had dinner around 8 or oh. 8.15 because I like to work out and I don't ah. want to start my workout until quarter of 7, 6.30. So by the time I get home from my workout, it's 8.30 and then take a shower, go to bed. So I eat kind of late for Americans. <laughs> Uh, right. So, I mean, do you, you must have to eat a big snack before your workout. 
Yeah, a little bit of a snack, maybe some peanut butter or, or banana or something like that. What about you? When do you eat dinner? We usually eat like between six and six thirty because of the of the of the child. Um, so the child. because he goes to sleep yes. soon after that, and uh, <laughs> so we usually try and eat all together. Um, oh my gosh! So usually yeah. at that time, but like sometimes if he's going to sleep, if he needs to go to sleep extra early, we'll give him his meal and then we'll and then we'll eat later but we used to eat you know probably more like seven or something like that yeah i think when you don't have kids you tend to eat later because it's just about you and the person right your partner <clears throat> and then when there's a child in the picture things i'm sure do change right yeah <laughs> the eating times yes yeah, so yeah always considering when when the eating time should be but the Absolutely. early bird special is like oh sometimes at restaurants um, yeah. you can go early for like, not, not all restaurants, but some restaurants will have something where if you go, um, early that there will be some sort of special, cheaper, cheaper meal, some sort of discount, right? Yeah, exactly. Usually it's like if you eat before six or before five thirty or something, because they want to just get people in there because no one eats at that time. So they're trying to encourage people to go in, eat, get them out and then bring in the dinner crew. Right, right, right. All right, let's show how this is used. All right. Oh, if we get there at five, we can get the early bird special. Eh, yeah, you know what? I'd rather pay more and eat later. Okay, fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. That doesn't sound very appealing. What do you What do you do if you eat dinner at five? What, it's in the middle of the day. Like, what do you do for the rest of the It's true. Like, sometimes it's just not worth it to throw off your, you know, you want to be excited for the meal you want to enjoy you don't want to go in when you're like not even hungry you know <laughs> yeah absolutely <laughs> absolutely true. okay so the yeah. next one is the idea of saying that people that are similar i guess stick together right is that what it means michelle what is this idiom this basically expression? yeah so this is birds of a feather flock together right mm -hmm. so or sometimes people just say birds of a feather right yeah um yeah so, mm -hmm. yeah, this is this idea that people often kind of like congregate with people who think sim uh, in a similar way or uh, it, it, but I, I think this one can definitely be debated as to whether that's a good thing or not. Uh, I, I don't really totally. Think, I mean, it depends what it is. It depends certainly what you're the reason that you're flocking together. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what do you think about this? Yeah, I agree, Michelle. I mean, in life, I think it's really good to just make yourself be in situations where people are not like you. And naturally when we travel, that's what happens. That's why I think travel is so good for us. So good for the soul. We're just thrown into situations or, you know, if we study abroad, we should really try to live with a family, even though it's maybe not the most comfortable thing, you know, live with a right. family or live with locals and then build a friend group that are actually local people. Um, yeah. yeah, I think that's true, but it's easy when people study abroad to just hang out with people from their school, right? Right, right, right. Exactly, exactly. So we want to push ourselves. Um, mm -hmm. So let's give a, a, an example of where I could see that this would be that this could be used. So here we go. Okay. Um, so Lindsay, I've already made some new friends. I found some ESL teachers, and they are so much fun. Wow, ESL teachers all on a cruise. Oh, of course you got along. Birds of a feather flock together. <laughs> it takes a long time to say okay. that. But we do actually use it. I have heard this in the last three months. Someone said it. So guys, these are real true expressions um, that we use. They don't just sound cute, right, Michelle? Right, right, right. And this is a, uh, this is a uh, way of using it that I think could be very useful. You know, like commenting. If somebody says, oh, I like... I ended up finding all the people like, uh, you know, I found a few friends who were all interested in video games and we talked about that all night, you know, like right. then you could comment on someone else's social situation. Mm -hmm. So here it's like, I'm on a cruise and I'm talking to Lindsay and I have already found all of these people who teach as well. And we've made friends and then you could comment, Oh yeah. Birds of a feather. Right. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Um, I love it. Good expression. And then the last one I love too, which is free as a bird. Okay. So when would you use this, Michelle? When would you say this? Well, it's really just saying that you're available or you don't have obligations. So it could be used literally with scheduling like, yeah. oh yeah, I'm free as a oh. bird. Or I mean, it could be used in a, in a deeper way to say like, oh, I, I, I quit my job and now I'm free as a bird and I'm going to find myself, that kind of a thing. 
the thing I'm thinking about is the last day of school. Oh, the best day (laughs) when you're a kid, right? It's so good. You never do any work. You know, usually you get let out early and then the kids be like, I'm free as a bird. We can do anything. That's the true definition, right? Of that expression. Absolutely. Absolutely. So I I know it, it, that's a great feeling when you're free as a bird. It's such a good, it's like you have the whole summer in front of you, you know, it's, it's the best day of the year by far when you're a kid. So (laughs) it is, it is, is. but we could also use it just for scheduling. So you Mm want to show our listeners how we would do that? Here we go. Are you around to talk? Yep. Uh, I'm free as a bird until six. Yeah. So guys, it's more fun to say I'm free as a bird instead of just saying, yeah, I'm free until six. Most of the time people will say I'm free until six, right, Right. Michelle? But if you really want to emphasize a little bit more feeling to something, like you are, you're flexible and you're happy that you're flexible and you want to talk to the person, you're just adding a little more feeling to what you're saying. Would you agree, Michelle? Exactly. It's just adding a little bit more of a punch. It's a little bit more fun. So yeah. if you say this every single time somebody asks <laughs> if you're if you're available, that then you're going to be known as the free as a bird person, right? Like you don't want to like just like, I mean, unless that's what you're going for, why not? But oh, you could also yeah. just you know sprinkle it in every every sprinkle once in a it while. In. It's it's fun. It is it's a fun thing to say. Yeah, sprinkle it in. Exactly. So, Michelle, lots of birds going on here in the English language that natives talk about. I want to remind you guys before we have our takeaway today and finish up the episode, go over and sign up for Open Conversation Club. Go to allearsenglish.com slash open. The dates are January 25th and January 29th. And we are so excited to be able to talk to you and let you talk to other students, other listeners of All Ears English. So excited for this, Michelle. It's going to be good. Definitely. Oh my gosh. Get in on that. That will be fun. Um, so remember, these are all really good idioms dealing specifically with birds. So we can choose another, <laughs> another animal another day because I do like working through these themes. I think yeah. that they can be helpful, good ways to remember things. So try and use some of these today. And I hope that you are free as a bird and that you can enjoy the rest of your day. All right. Sounds good, Michelle. Enjoy your day. Talk to you soon. Right. Bye. Bye.